Hello everyone. Now we have another example. This is an inclined plane, as you can see, and this inclined plane makes an angle of 40 degrees with the horizontal. Okay. On this inclined plane, there is an object, and this object I'm going to call it A, and it's connected through a rope with another object on the other side of the inclined plane, I'm going to call this B, okay? Now, if you know that mass of A is equal to unknown, mass of B is known and it's equal to 3 kilogram, okay? The question is, calculate mass of A such that system is in equilibrium. So we need the system to be in equilibrium. Okay, well, how do we do that? The system in equilibrium means that there's no acceleration. And, you know, let's say system is in equilibrium once released. What does that mean? That somebody is holding the system with their hand together, and once you take your hand off, nothing happens. I have to mention here that this is very important. This is frictionless. Surface. So this is important here to say, this is frictionless surface. Okay? <clears throat> so basically, because there's no friction, it's very, very delicate, okay? All right, how do we go about doing this problem? Let's remember now, let's look at this. We have two objects, so we have to draw three body diagrams. Two, I'm sorry, two body diagrams. One for the inclined plane. So I'm going to make this an inclined plane, just like that, okay? Now, this is what... This is for object A. Maybe I should write this here too. And I'm going to change the color so that we can see better. The, the, the force that is trying to pull down on this mass is, as we learned for inclined plane, is mass times gravity times sine the angle. I'm just going to put it sine 40. Okay. Now the object is being pulled by the tension from the other side, okay? All right, so that's the first one. And now, of course, we have here, we know this is the normal force, and here is mg cosine theta. I'm not going to worry about the y direction for this particular example, for this particular also object. And the reason is, this is a frictionless surface. So, to save yourself some time, once you see a frictionless surface, probably you won't need the y-axis. Most of the time you need y-axis when there is friction involved, okay? All right, now let's draw the free body diagram for B. So I'm going to do it here because I know B is only in the y-axis. I'm going to just put a little bit of an x-axis here. And I'm going to put here, that's the force of gravity on B. And this is equal to m b or m sub b times g and up here what do you think it is if that's t that's t that's t that's t and that's t the tension because it's only one rope connecting two objects the pulley does not have anything you know to change the value of the tension it just changes its direction this is a small pulley okay and up here, so that's going to be the tension. All right, now let's do the solution for this problem. <coughs> I'm going to, since we have only to worry about um, the x-axis, I'm just going to put this for fun. Summation over fx is equal to ma times big A, the acceleration. But we know... The system has to be in equilibrium. So if the system is in equilibrium, the acceleration is zero. So this whole thing goes to zero. Okay. 
The same for the y, summation over fy is equal to 0. There's no motion there. But as I said, we are not going to need the y dimension because we don't have friction. But I'm going to focus on the x direction. But in general, that's what we do. So summation over fx, we have t minus m sub a g sine 40 is equal to 0. Or I can say t, the tension is equal to mass of a g sine 40. And as you can see, we can we can we can make some calculations to find um, this number because sine 40 we can find it. G times sine 40 g is 9.8, and we can we can find that. But uh, we don't have t and we don't have the mass of a. So now we're stuck. We have to go to another source of information, and this source of information is this guy. But you need to remember very carefully. Look. We chose already, this is positive. As you can see, this is positive, this is negative. Now, it goes above the pulley and come down. So, going down now is positive. Then, going up is negative for this object. Remember that, because you have to preserve the system of signs. So, I'm going to say here, for this object, summation over Fy is equal to mass of b times the acceleration. Again, there's no acceleration. All the system is connected. So I'm going to say here, mbg minus t is equal to 0, or I can say that t is equal to mass of b times g. Now, mass of b is equal to, uh, is given to be equal to 3 kilogram, and g is 9.8. <coughs> And if we multiply these together, this come up well as, so 3 times 9.7, that will become 29.4 Newton. Okay. Now, that's equal to what? T. We take this and put it here. So I can write this equation again, t, which is equal to 29.4, is equal to mass of mass of a times 9.8 times sine times sine 40. Okay. And with some calculations, the only unknown is mass of A, and so with some calculation we can conclude that mass of A is equal to 4.7 kilograms. Okay. Now let's look at the number. Do they make sense? This object here, the mass of A, we found it's equal to be 4.7 kilogram and this one here is 3.2 kilogram. Do the numbers make sense? The answer is yes, they do make sense. Okay, why? Why do they make sense? Well, this is an inclined plane. It's not perfectly on like drop down. It's an inclined plane. So you need more of the mass to keep this from falling this way. Does that make sense? Because this is 3.2 and this is 4.7. Okay, that's it for the for this example. Thank you.